Hey everybody, I'm Chris, and today we are going to do a review with the uh, Xtool um, D1 Pro. This is the 20 watt laser again from Xtool. Um, it's not really an unboxing, just kind of showing you everything that you get outside of the box and point out a few things I learned along the way that are helpful tips. Um, uh, for you, those of you who subscribe to my channel, regular reviewers, uh, this is a completely different look for me. Um, I haven't done dining room production since I uh, first started my channel. Uh, this is where I did all my drone reviews. Uh, so it's been several years since I've done, done my uh, reviews like this, but a lot more room to work on. The lighting's all here, so uh, just going to do it from the dining room and let's see how it goes. But uh, we're going to try and keep this sheet uh, short and sweet and uh, just kind of show you everything that comes with it and then show you um, some in action uh, use of it with just a few of the things I've created over here. So we'll get into all those, but uh, quickly just wanted to say the one main important thing when you get the 20 watt laser with the air assist, which I'll show you more on that as well. Um, the air assist comes with a nozzle and another air attachment and so forth, but Here's the nozzle, and what I wanted to point out to you is this nozzle is longer. It's a, it's a longer nozzle with a narrower, narrower hole in the center. Um, and originally I thought this, would, this one should probably go and replace the one it comes with. But in talking to Xtool, there's no documentation on this that I could find. Uh, Xtool said, no, leave this, this original one on. It just comes off with a set screw but leave the original nozzle on. Uh, this nozzle here is for the uh, Xtool D1, not the Pro. So this is your regular Xtool D1, which I think is a 10 watt, I'm not sure, but we do not use that. And it would also come with this little piece here for your air assist, which would screw on top of that, that one, which you can see here, this one's way too big for it and it already has one. So, of course, you won't be using that either. And then this shield would go on your D1 as well, which you can tell is much smaller than what we have here. So none of this is going to be anything you will use for this model here. Uh, it's for the standard D1. Uh, the D1 Pro, you already have all this on here. You just have to add this piece and it comes with it. Uh, with the Air Assist, they also supply you with one, so now you'll have a spare. So you have this little toolkit, just point out real quick, it comes with a spare lens that goes on your um, laser, which is underneath that nozzle, and some Allen wrenches and then a driver, and something fairly important for like tumblers and so forth is your level. Um, and then some leftover screws, who knows, maybe I didn't put it together right, and we have leftover screws and it's just gonna fall apart. Uh, <laughs> But you also get your safety glasses uh, for, for protecting your eyes against the laser. And then we'll go into all this other stuff. But um, that's why I have this unhooked because I just wanted to show you, make sure if you have the, the D1 Laser Pro 20 watt, um, the D1 Pro 20 watt, that you keep your nozzle on there and then just add this air assist piece. So we can put that back. It's easier actually to hook your wire up first. Wire just plugs in. Um, I will say putting this all together um, for the most part is very easy. Um, there's some things you gotta just kind of figure out for yourself, but uh, it was all relatively easy. So that's in place. Um, everything that you have to do to put together basically is put your side frames on. It's just four pieces here. And then the center piece, you put them all together, basically tighten up screws, do your belt adjustments and uh, plug in all the wires. The wires are color coded. You really can't go wrong hooking any of this up. Uh, you might stumble a little bit along the way, but the manual is pretty good uh, for everything that it involves uh, in telling you how to put this together. Uh, real quick, we'll just go through. You have plenty of manuals. You have a good manual for your air assist. If you've bought the chuck, uh, the 
the RA2. It's got its own manual. It's got a booklet of just showing you all kinds of creative ideas, 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 and a thank you card, and then your uh, instructions, quick start guide, and then you also have a pack of a whole bunch of little uh, things to get you started, little pieces of woods and metals and things like that uh, that you can practice on. So you automatically have some material to work with as soon as you uh, get it out of the box and get it all set up. Um, I'll do more videos getting into uh, using um, laser burn or light burn, I'm sorry. And um, I don't know that I'll be using this exact, la this exact laser engraver or another one because I received multiples. And um, there is something I like a little bit more about the other one, but that's in future videos. So this might be the only video I do on this and then I might be passing this on to uh, my boss uh, who wants one for himself and his, his son. So might not be doing much more content unless I go and visit with them and do more content. But um, just uh, let me get these out over here just to show you and I'll show you the video uh, of, of me doing it. Um, I took some leather, pleather, there's just like a vinyl, um, some coasters and I'll pop that up on the screen. And I basically wanted to do some drone landing pads so I did that burn and uh, that went super fast because you want to do these extremely light or you'll burn right through them with this 20 watt. But uh, you can see that I, I did them and they went through relatively quickly. Uh, and then after I was done uh, doing them, I, I got to looking at them and I was thinking, eh, it'd be kind of cool if I could put a drone on there or maybe my logo. So I went ahead and decided to put a drone on there. I did it in two different sizes and then went back and just put it on my my uh, work plate and um, burned the drone on there so uh, I think they turned out pretty good and then I've sealed them with a clear coat satin uh, so that way wherever it's been burned liquid won't get into that and make the the pleather delaminator swell um, but that's one thing I did and then I did these slate coasters I uh, didn't make any footage of that. That'll be in future videos to come of me just showing different uh, materials in my settings and so forth. Uh, one thing I want to point out, doing settings, my settings aren't necessarily going to be the same as yours. We can have the exact same tool or machine, the exact same materials, doing the exact same file, and it doesn't mean our, our settings are going to be exact. Um, there's different conditions that can make it slightly different, uh, especially when it comes to tumblers. The brand of the tumbler can make all the difference in the world. You can set your, yourself up and do 10 tumblers and they turn out perfect. Then you buy a different style, you put that on, and it turns out completely different. Um, so in a nutshell, this is pretty much it. Um, it's a nice big 400 by 400 millimeter, just over 400 by 400 millimeter workspace. Uh, your home position is upper right on this one. Um, a lot of them are lower left, but in this one it's, up, it's right up here. Uh, this one does have the air assist. So we'll bring it down here and just show you. Here's the air assist. Nice, very quiet pump. Sounds a lot like a fish tank pump. Um, it's got really nice rubber absorbers on the bottom, so it, when it's vibrating it absorbs all the all the cushion uh, the cord has a on off switch and then you just simply run it down into here and plug it right into your laser and then you just want to have it to where it'll while you're moving around it'll have plenty of room and not end up in the the way of any moving parts um, so air assist, it's very simple, main purpose of it, keep the burn off of your image and also keep the laser head clean. So um, you'll see that will be attached and in action in the video I've shown. 
uh, making this coaster and you'll see it when I show you the video of me doing the tumblers. Um, the, the video I'm going to show you with the tumblers shows you real user experience because I did not have an easy time at it, but I did eventually get it. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, where I was going wrong basically and I'll explain what I did to resolve that, but I'll show you another one real quick. Uh, this is just a back scratcher. It's a telescopic back scratcher. Um, it's simply just burned on there. You can't see it, I'm sure, from this camera, but it says QC guy has your back. And uh, it started out as a little joke at work, and then I found them really cheap and decided I'm going to go ahead and engra engrave QC guy has your back. Uh, so um, that's playing up on the upper corner. You can see how quickly it does that. 20 watt laser, super fast. Uh, the power of this thing is an adjustment for me because I'm used to less and um, I'm, I'm uh, acclimated to, to less to where I can pretty much dial it in almost instantly where this one I'm always overpowering and uh, ruining my projects. So you got to be careful when you get into, when you bump up to a 20 watt uh, because you're, you're definitely going to have to cut back on your power and speed and increase your speeds and such. Um, so uh, just to show you, let's get into the tumbler. The tumbler is something I'm not 100% crazy about. Um, I don't really like what they've done with this tum tumbler and it is lacking. But if you're going to use the tumbler, uh, you get these extensions. They sell four of them or eight of them you're going to want to buy the eight pack with the chuck uh, because you want to get it elevated. So I'll quickly put those on and uh, we'll fast forward. And there you have it. Now I feel like I'm in a tiny little chair and I'm like, I'm real short, but so it's got rubber feet on it. It, it grips and holds real well. Um, it's not going to be moving around. You don't have to mount this to a table sur sur surface or anything. If you look in, if you watch the video examples I show you, I had it on a card table and that table's wobbling the whole time. It didn't affect it. I was holding it a little bit with my hand, but the table still shook the whole time and it did not affect anything. Um, you definitely want to have it something more secure like this than a card table, but uh, I was doing that just for video purposes. But um, just to show you, let's kind of tuck this aside before we grab the tumblers. Um, here is what I don't like about this. Uh, it's a chuck where you, know, you just simply adjust, put your tumbler on there. Now what I don't like is that they've done the, the combo of the chuck and rollers. For me, I want something that I grab it, I use it, and I don't have to do anything. Um, this one, if you're using you know, the chuck with the tumblers or just using the tumbler, I mean the rollers, uh, I keep saying tumblers, the rollers, if you're just using the rollers, it doesn't make sense to me. So uh, this is really for short project cups. So you would have it, I guess, in the chuck and then touching the rollers. I really can't see you putting anything on top of here unless you had to take this whole chuck off, which you can take it off, but that, that again is where I don't want to have to disassemble and make something, make something work. You either buy the roller or you buy the chuck in my opinion. Um, another brand that I have, they did it right. They put all their focus on just keeping it simple. Uh, you know the saying, keep it simple, stupid. But uh, they put their focus on keeping it simple, but it does something that this one does not do that is what sells that chuck for me uh, 100%. What this one does not do is it does not tilt. So if you have, so let's just use this one as an example. If you have something in there and then you know, you've, got, you've got it going, going downhill, and you want to keep that level underneath your, your, your laser, your focal point, your high here, low here, you're going to have to put something underneath here and just find that happy medium level, um, that level surface. So that's what I don't like is that you have to do something like that. 
The other one I was mentioning, which you'll see in other videos from another brand, the other guy, um, it's got that adjustment. The whole thing, you just loosen two screws and the whole thing, it'll, it'll stand straight up or go all the way in the opposite direction. Um, that is what sells that chuck for me. So this one I'm not crazy about. Uh, when I use it, some, of, some pieces that are larger, uh, I've had to, and I've got it unscrewed right now, but I've had to take it apart. So you take the rollers out. You would normally unscrew it. And you take the rollers out. And then you put on your larger tumbler. And then you have, also have external pieces like this, where you can raise this up and you can rest your, rest your tumbler on that. Um, I personally wouldn't use this. I think I would use it more for the rollers. The chuck does its job. The chuck holds, holds the piece on there and it doesn't go anywhere. Um, this right here is another piece that slides on. Let's see if we can get it in there. So this would slide up and they, they show an example of somebody uh, putting an egg on that. Uh, it's in the chuck with the egg. Well, actually, it's in these little fingers that come along with it. And uh, the other end of the egg is in here. If you're engraving eggs, that I won't be doing. But this is just another piece. I'm trying to move along here and keep it kind of quick for you. Um, these would go in place of drop the screw. You take these three pieces off right here. It's just two screws holds each of these on. You take those off and then you thread these in and you can do things like rings. Um, you could go as small as, you know, something like, it's hard to show you, but uh, something like that, to, you know, much wider. Um, you can use it for like a metal, a metal silver or a gold ring that you would wear on your finger and doing fine engraving, uh, things like that. The example again they used was an egg. Um, I got to remember to pick up that screw wherever it is. Grab it now. And then of course it comes with your chuck key to lock everything down. And honestly, this is, sounds like I'm being very petty, but this is another thing I do not like compared to the other one. I find when I'm turning this, if I'm not holding this base, it turns and then I've lost my, my little focal area that I already had this set for. Um, the other brand, the other guy, they simply have two metal sticks basically that go in and you just go like this and it doesn't cause me to twist it. Um, so again, these are minor things, uh, but chuck for chuck, this one is not my preferred one. It serves the purpose. It's perfectly fine. It's a, it's, it's well made. Um, I just don't like to have to take parts off, put parts on for the different uses where a chuck is a, a, a chuck just needs to work as a chuck. Uh, if you want a roller, you buy the roller system separate and then you don't have to take all this stuff apart. That's the way I would prefer to do it. And uh, one thing to explain, you unplug here and then I'm turned around so I don't know where I'm at. You unplug, I think it's on this side. Yeah, I think it's on this side, your Y axis. This becomes your Y axis. That's your x-axis and instead of this going like this and like this it's just going to go like that and then your chuck is going to go like that you'll see it in my video but just to show you real quick and then we'll end the video and i'll show you the example of me making my uh, tumbler so we have this we have this up here you have your air assist all hooked up you put your chuck underneath here which now you probably can't see, but we're going to put this back on and um, just give you an idea of just how you quickly set up for something like this. You take your chuck key and you tighten it down. So you bring your laser over 
when you set your at your height and everything and that's this guy right here so you flip this down and you just want that piece to touch which i think you might be able to see through here uh, you just want it to you want it to rest on your tumbler um, but what you'll want to keep in mind is if you have something that's high and then low you want to kind of split that difference you might have to play with your focal point a little bit um, these are all things I'll show you up and close when I'm actually doing videos, doing different materials, and I really want to show you how I, how I create the things I've created. Um, but you'll have your tumbler in there like so, and uh, set your position, and then the little tip I'll give you is I just put a magnet right here, and then I do my test square, and I make sure that magnet goes the same distance here as it does here. It's just something I prefer to do. Uh, I use a lot of magnets when I'm setting up things on my flatbed or with my tumbler. Um, that way I see that it's going to be in the exact area I want it to be in when it's doing its, its uh, preview square frame for you. Um, but that's pretty much it. You'll take your wire and the wire that we unhook here hooks into your tumbler and then plugs in here and uh, you'll enable the tumbler mode on light burn and then put in your settings for the for the circumference and all that um, nothing I'm going to really get into detail with you now but I'll pop up the video and just kind of explain to you as it's playing uh, of me doing this one here um, I burn this one and it's it's I've got it going at like 20 times the speed so it'll go by real quick but I burned this one right here and I had um, some black residue left over I'm overheating I think to where I'm burning the stainless um, it, it's not that I'm not removing all of the image I'm actually burning the stainless and making it very dull so you'll see see weird lines in the logo after I get it off the laser and wipe it down. Um, but then I grabbed another tumbler and did some drones. I did some practice ones and you can see I'm very dark, medium. Well, that one's not bad actually. That one's medium uh, to where it's still got a lot of that darkness. So I'm still burning it and um, in this case I left I, let, I went so low that I left image behind. And then finally, you'll see this is nice, crisp, clean. I went on, on my QC logo. This one turned out perfect. Um, and it's just a matter of playing with the settings. So again, when I do videos on, on this and I share me making these creations, I'll tell you my settings, but I'll always emphasize my settings aren't going to be exactly what you get with yours. So. Um, that's pretty much it. You saw in the video of that, you know, how that's burning uh, by me playing it in an upper right hand corner here. Um, there's really not much more to show you. Uh, the best thing I can tell you is, aside from reading the manual, you're always going to get a better online manual. So go to xtool.com uh, and look at their manual, their setup for the D1 Pro. And that's where it will tell you how to get this thing hooked up to light burn. In the manual, it doesn't tell you anything about using light burn. Light burn's a third party, but on their website, it tells you how to do it. Um, you'll go, you're going to have to download a couple files, uh, update your firmware on this, make sure you're up, up to date on your firmware. Um, it comes with the power cable I didn't mention and you have a USB cable. You'll see here there's an antenna under here. Um, it's also Wi-Fi. And uh, you'll get your firmware all updated and then you'll download a file, put that onto your desktop. And then when you go into Lightburn, uh, basically you're going to import that file and then it will recognize your laser. These are all things I had to do and uh, kind of do a little research and I stumbled across some uh, pretty cool YouTubers that uh, gave, me, gave me the information and so I'm just passing that on to you. And that's pretty much it. That's everything uh, with this. Hopefully you could see the video good enough of while I was creating these things. Um, you know, again, they did not turn out beautifully. I'm overheating, 
but these are all things this 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 one here turned out pretty good uh, these are all things i'm learning as i go um, but uh, this right here if i was actually selling a product this is sellable this is garbage uh, but Buy yourself a sacrificial lamb like I did, buy a couple of them, and uh, keep your logos small. Like if you're doing logos that are really big normally, go ahead and make them small, like 20 by 20 millimeters. And um, that way you can keep burning and have lots of, lots of uh, ground for your mistakes. And you can just keep on trying and trying and trying until you dial it in. And as you're doing that, write down notes and uh, save your projects and uh, your files and um, hopefully you'll dial it in and get to a point where it's easy for you but don't give up so it can be frustrating for me going from something uh, that was under 10 watt originally i had for like five or six years and then going to a 20 watt made it a big struggle for me uh, i've also got a 10 watt that's the happy medium i'm very comfortable on that 10 watt uh, where I can just dial it right in pretty much every time and not destroy as much material. So this is a big learning curve if you're going to be jumping straight to a 20 watt. But uh, it's a fine machine. This thing is so well made. Uh, better made than the other one that I have from the other guy. Uh, as far as stability, it's just a, a much more robust, uh, thick frame. And the wires, everything are very neat. I have no complaints over this whole thing at all. My only complaints are just the minor complaints I shared with you with the chuck. Uh, I'm just not crazy about this chuck. Uh, if you told me this other chuck that I have uh, works with this, I would use that other chuck. Who knows? Maybe it does. Uh, but I'm, I'm, not going to, I'm probably not going to be keeping this long enough to even find out. Uh, so this, again, is the initial video of me with this, and then I might... Uh, once I give it to my boss and his son, uh, I might you know, go visit them and participate with them in making some creations and then turn that into video content for my channel uh, for you guys to see. Uh, this is your more high end and there, that's part of the reason I, I did not choose to stick with this. I want to stick with something that's a little more affordable that will still do everything this does uh, that the 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 basic person or the, the average person, I'm not calling you guys basic, uh, the average person is going to do all of this kind of stuff. The 10 watt is perfectly fine at doing that, it saves you a good bit of money. So I'm going with a more budget friendly uh, model and it's a name brand that I'm used to, that I've been using for years that uh, I, would, I would much rather work with. So that's what you're gonna see more content on, but the X tool, this is going, this whole, whole apparatus here is going to cost you uh, I think a minimum of $1,500. Uh, I'd like to keep it under $1,000 for um, what I'm showing you guys and uh, hopefully get some people interested on something that's uh, more affordable. So I've gone long-winded as always, but uh, that's it for now. And um, hopefully you enjoyed uh, taking a little peek at this Xtool D1 Pro 20 watt. And um, if you have any questions, I, I'll do my best to answer and put them in the comments. But uh, if you're new to my channel, first off, hit that like button. But if you're new to my channel, I would appreciate it if you subscribe and then hit the bell for future content notification and uh, more to come with these laser engravers, not just Xtool, um, of course, drones and uh, some EVs, electric bikes, unicycle, and so forth. So uh, subscribe to my channel, hit that bell, come back for more, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace and love.